The Philippine Congress proclaims Ferdinand Marcos Jr. and Sara Duterte president-elect and vice-president-elect, respectively. In record pace, the House of Representatives and the Senate started the canvas at 10 a.m. Monday, May 23, and was done by 3.33 p.m. Wednesday, May 25. Throughout the day, several certificates of canvas were not found in the ballot boxes. How difficult is that to do? How can we confirm them? They can even deliver to us today. The COC is needed to canvas the votes for president and vice president. Kamalek officials say it was due to lack of sleep. They were eventually allowed to send the COCs through Viber and then testify virtually on their authenticity. The COCs from Argentina and Syria cannot make it to the House of Representatives in time, but Congress decides to terminate the canvas anyway. Senator Miguel Zubiri says these would not change the results. Without the Argentina and Syria COCs, the National Board of Canvassers count shows Marcos winning with 31.63 million votes, or 58.77% of votes in the presidential race. Duterte, meanwhile, receives 32.21 million votes, or 61.53% of votes in the vice presidential race. The Supreme Court is currently tackling two petitions that seek to void Marcos' candidacy, and in effect, his win. If his COC is cancelled, it is clear the winner would be the second placer, who is Vice President Lenny Robredo. If the disqualification case is granted, there is a debate on whether Robredo assumes the presidency or Duterte as the vice president becomes president. Presumptive President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. picks lawyer and pro-Duterte vlogger Trixie Cruz Angeles to be his press secretary. The Marcos camp announces the appointment Wednesday, May 25, saying Angeles already accepted the nomination. As press secretary, Angeles will lead the Presidential Communications Operations Office, or PCOO, an agency that supervises state media channels and stations like PTV, Radio Nambayan, and more. The Marcos camp clarifies Angeles will not be the presidential spokesperson, as the presumptive president earlier announced he will not appoint one. Marcos camp adds, Making the press secretary, the spokesperson limits her function to a talking head during press briefings. Under the administration of President Rodrigo Duterte, Angeles took on the role of social media strategist for the agency from July 2017 to 2018. Angeles regularly lambasted journalists, opposition figures, and critics of the government. In a Senate hearing, she admitted feeding pro-government information to Moka Uson, who ran a Facebook page that spread disinformation and propaganda. Need more context, clarity, and perspective? Get the full picture with Rappler Plus. With exclusive content and events, you'll get an opportunity to discuss issues with reporters, experts, and featured guests while helping Rappler continue its fearless journalism. Join now. The Department of Finance wants taxes raised, tax reductions delayed, and tax exemptions cancelled to reduce government deficits and debt accumulation. Presumptive President Ferdinand Marcos Jr. will assume office with a tight fiscal space as pandemic borrowings and weak revenues under President Rodrigo Duterte's administration led to debt reaching almost 13 trillion pesos. According to the DOF, the deferment of the personal income tax reduction scheduled in 2023, as specified by the Tax Reform for Acceleration and Inclusion or Train Law, would give the government 97.7 billion pesos per year. The DOF also proposes raising the value-added tax base and voiding exemptions to save 142.5 billion pesos. The agency says exemptions for education, agriculture, health, the financial sector, and raw food should be retained. But they recommend slapping excise taxes on motorcycles, single-use plastics, luxury goods, social media influencers, gaming, cryptocurrencies, and carbon tax. Bureau of the Treasury data show the Philippines needs to raise 249 billion pesos every year in incremental revenues for the next 10 years to pay the country's 3.2 trillion pesos in incremental debt. The Marcos family has an unpaid estate tax liability of 203 billion pesos, after the Supreme Court ruling on the matter became final and executory in March 1999. In the United States, an 18-year-old gunman kills at least 19 children and two teachers after storming into a Texas elementary school Wednesday, May 25, Manila time. 
It is the latest bout of gun-fueled mass killings in the U.S. and the nation's worst school shooting in nearly a decade. Authorities say the suspect, identified as Salvador Ramos, shot his own grandmother, who survived the attack, before the mass shooting. He flees the scene and crashes his car near the Robb Elementary School in Uvalde, Texas. There he goes into a bloody rampage that ends when he is killed, apparently shot by the police. The motive is not immediately clear. Speaking from the White House hours later, U.S. President Joe Biden urges Americans to stand up to the politically powerful U.S. gun lobby. As a nation, we have to ask, when in God's name are we going to stand up to the gun lobby? When in God's name we do what we all know in our gut needs to be done? I am sick and tired of it. We have to act. And don't tell me we can't have an impact on this carnage. A mass shooting 10 days earlier claimed 10 lives in Buffalo, New York, a predominantly black neighborhood. Filipina Argentinian actress Chantal Videla, going by the stage name Chanty, is officially introduced as a member of upcoming K pop girl group La Pilis. MLD Entertainment unveils on Wednesday, May 25, Chanty's teaser photo on Twitter, with her birth date as the caption. Beginning Monday, May 23, the group has been introducing each of its members, most of whom were born from 2002 to 2006. Earlier reports say the upcoming act will be marketed as a global girl group, with members who can speak Korean, English, Spanish, Filipino, Chinese, and Japanese. The six-member group to debut in June is MLD Entertainment's first girl group in over six years after Momoland. Chanty, 19, was first introduced to Filipino fans as part of Star Circle Batch 2018. She also appeared in ABS-CBN television series Spirits Reawaken, Hiwaga ng Kambat, and Starla. 